Hey, Tim Schetz here again with C4D Training. Today we're going to continue on with our multi-part tutorial covering lighting. In the last tutorial we went over the general tab. In this tutorial we're going to go ahead and start with the details tab. So I've gone ahead and set up a couple of lights. I have four lights here in my scene and I've gone ahead and rendered this just so you can see. So these two lights pretty much look exactly the same. I have light and I have light one. If I go ahead and turn on use inner what that does is it allows me to use an inner angle and I have multiple angles set here. On light I have my inner angle set to 0. On light 1 I have my inner angle set to 10 degrees. Uh, on both of these the outer angle is 30 degrees so I have a 30 degree cone on my spotlight. And let me show you what this does. I'm going to go ahead and render this again. So now you can see the difference. If I turn that off and render it one more time, you can see this one has kind of a, a hard edge and this one is a little bit softer, looks a little more realistic. This kind of almost looks cartoony. So if I select on light one here and we look, I, I've gone ahead and disabled the use inner. And what happens when you disable that is the light coming out of the spotlight, it's 100% throughout the whole light and that's why you get that really sort of hard edge like this. On this light here I have my use inner selected and I have my inner angle set to zero. And what that means is it's going to look at this light and it's going to say okay from the center the very center of the light all the way out it's going to just start to fade and you're going to have this nice fade from the center all the way out. If we change that and I change my inner angle to say 10 and I render this again, what happens is I have a solid 100% light sort of in the center and then the fade out starts at a 10 degree angle. So I basically have a 20 degree angle of fade out on this light because I have a 30 degree outer angle and a 10 degree inner angle. So that's 20 degrees of a fade. If I go ahead and change this to 30 degrees I get the, basically the same thing as having use inner turned off because I'm saying I want the fade out to start at 30 degrees and go to 30 degrees. So basically I have zero degrees of fade out on that light. And of course we can change our angles. I can't make my inner angle greater than my outer angle. So I, if I want to do this I have to take, take my outer angle and make it a little bit bigger and then I can make my inner angle. And you can see you get these kind of cones that give you a visual representation of where that's going to happen for the uh, start of the fall off. Moving down here to aspect ratio I'm going to go ahead and move our light over here so you can see it and actually rotate up a little bit. So right now I have a, a round light if I change my aspect ratio, I get more of a oblong sort of light if I need it. Render that, and there we go. We can get a little bit of a different shape. Okay, so if I click on, go ahead and click on my light again, and go to my details tab. I have this contrast option here and what that does is that increases the amount of contrast that is created by the light. Depending on what you're trying to do you can kind of play with those numbers and see how it affects your scene. Then we have this shadow caster here. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to another file and show you some things here. So here I've got just a plane with a box and I have these two lights and they're just omni lights and I have them kind of in different directions and if I render this you can see I've got two shadows kind of showing up here and that's kind of a little weird um, depending on how you're lighting your scene you probably really want to have one shadow so if that's the case what you want to do is select both your lights and under the general tab change your shadows to none for those lights then I have my shadow caster object here which I've turned off so I'm going to go ahead and turn that on 
And on my shadow caster under details, you can see I have the shadow caster option selected. And if I go ahead and render this, I get one shadow. Even though I have multiple lights in the scene, I have one shadow coming from one direction. So I have my two lights not casting shadows. And then this shadow caster, what it does, it actually turns off the light and just casts a shadow. And so you can use that to manipulate your shadows so that they look a little bit more realistic. Okay, so now I want to talk about this option here, fall off. That's the method by which it calculates how much the light is going to fall off over a certain distance. When dealing with lighting, there is something called the inverse square law. And it's how light naturally falls off from its light source. So here we have a light source, and here we have two planes. And these two planes are exactly the same size. It's an optical illusion making them look like they're not, but they are. And these are our light rays coming from our light source. What the inverse square law states is that as light travels from its light source, the rays spread out. So the number of rays hitting this square are one quarter the number of rays that are hitting this square. So the light is going to appear to be dimmer. And it's not that the light is losing its energy because light can travel great distances without losing any energy whatsoever. But the rays spread out so it looks like it's dimming down. So on our first panel here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rays hitting it. Our second panel, we only have one, two, three, four. So you're probably saying to yourself, wait a minute, that's half, not one quarter. Well, this is only the vertical direction. It also takes place in the horizontal direction. So we have eight rays hitting in the vertical direction and eight rays hitting in the horizontal direction, that's 64 rays. Over here, we have four by four, which is 16, and 16 is one quarter of 64. So the inverse square law is actually the most natural selection for your fall off when working in Cinema 4D. When we come into Cinema 4D, under fall off, by default it says none, and we have choices. We can do linear step, inverse, there's inverse clamped, all these other ones. Generally, I'll use inverse square because it is the, the most natural. You can play around with the other ones and see how they look for you. Um, but if you're going to be, if you want something to kind of look a little bit more natural, I would at least start with inverse square. And when you add that, it activates this radius decay. And if I zoom out here, you can see instead of having the inner and outer angles because uh, on a spotlight we would have a cone, when it's an omnilight, it switches to a radius. By default, the radius is 500 meters, which depends on what you're trying to do, but you know you can drag it down and, and you can see the actual radius change. We go ahead and render this. And I'm going to go ahead and make my light visible so you can kind of see it. And so we can see the fall off here. If I go ahead and go to my details page and change that to none and render it, the brightness kind of is, is more even there. So if I go inverse square, see how it kind of falls off and it's not so bright as it goes further away the light gets dimmer. It's actually not getting dimmer, the rays are just spreading out. So under here I can change this and I can make the fall off the radius decay even smaller. And I can go even smaller if I want just so you can see the kind of the difference. And if I raise it up. So now I'm getting this bright spot here. All right, so we're going to go down and skip to this near clip and far clip. And to demonstrate that, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to another file I have set up here. It's a street light. So I go ahead and render this. You know, looks pretty cool. 
All right, we can go ahead and throw a plane in here, maybe, and uh, make this a little bit more interesting. If I render it, now we get the street light shining on the ground. But something weird is happening here. Because we have a spotlight, it's kind of starting at a point. Well, I don't know of any street lights that start at a point like that. So what we can do is we can adjust our light. Actually, this is our light here. And I'm going to turn on near clip and far clip. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here. Now I have these two green little disks that indicate something. So if I go ahead and render this, now my light's being cut off there, which is a little weird. That's not exactly what I want. All right, so we're going to go ahead and adjust our near clip and far clip. So we'll start with our near clip and bring this guy down. And this guy's going to determine where the cutoff is. So if I have it all the way up and I render this, I still get that point of light. So if I bring this down and I render it, see now how it's cut off and it has, it looks like it's coming from a wider light source and that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to actually increase this a little bit and increase this guy a little bit. Now if I render that, it's definitely coming from a wider light source now. So I'm going to take my light and I'm going to move it up a bit. And when I render that, now my light is trying to shine through my my object. So I'm going to go ahead over my general tab and I'm going to say inverse volumetric. Now when I render that, it looks like it's coming out of the light, the street light a little bit better. So if I go ahead and zoom out here, move this up. Now when I render this, it's kind of cut off at the bottom and that's because of the far clip. So I'm going to go ahead to my detail tab and we're going to bring this guy down. Okay, so if we go ahead and render that. So we have our street light. It looks like it's more like it's coming out of the street light, not quite hitting the ground. So we're going to go ahead and increase this number. So then we see this other green circle come down. We can see it reflecting on the ground. I'm going to go ahead and render that so you can see what's happening here. Now look what's happening. We have a shadow being cast by the street light. That's because we had to move our light up so that we had that flat part there on the where the light fixture is. A couple things we're going to do to fix that. First thing is we're going to go ahead back to our general tab and instead of inverse volumetric we're going to switch that to volumetric because now the lights being generated technically it's down here. It's no longer inside the light. We want it to be from down here, so we want it to be volumetric, so if I go ahead and render that. It's still looking a little weird because that light fixture is in the way. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to switch over here to this Scene tab, and notice here that it says Exclude. Well, these are going to be objects that are excluded from this light. The light, They're not going to have any effect on the light at all. And the thing that we want to exclude from the light is the street light itself. So I'm going to click that and drag it in there. Now if I render this, we have our street light. Pretty cool, huh? And since we're kind of over on this end of the uh, the tabs here, I'm going to show you something else. If we go ahead and render that one more time, we see our street light. Looks kind of cool. I'm going to go ahead over here to noise, and under noise, I'm going to select both. So it means both illumination and visibility are going to have noise in them. And now if I render this, we get kind of a foggy sort of night in San Francisco. And we can tweak this, you know, till our heart's content trying to make it look better. So if I go back to my light and I go on my details page and we change this a little bit and I bring this up just a wee bit and see how that looks. Looking a little better. We could increase our angle of our light here a little bit. And we can raise up our clip there. So there we go. Kind of have a street light in San Francisco. Maybe it's in the Presidio or something. So quickly back here to the noise tab. So we can animate any of this. We can animate the octaves. We can, as you can see, it's changing there a little bit. 
We can change its velocity, its brightness. We can add wind from any direction, x, y, or z, uh, and the wind velocity. So you can actually have this sort of smoke moving through your lights, or at least having it look like it's moving through your lights. Kind of cool for, you know, a film noir project. We've covered the scene tab, how to exclude an object. Kind of gone over the noise, gone over the details, and in the previous tutorial we went over the general tab. In the next tutorial we will be going over the visibility and the shadow tabs. Thanks for watching. I'm Tim Schetz for C4D Training. Take care.